In late 2022, my Grammy died of cancer and I noticed a spot on my shoulder that seemed concerning. Perhaps because of this, I returned to the My Chemical Romance album, The Black Parade. It deals a lot with the notion of dying from such an illness. The spot turned out to be an aggressive melanoma and hey, do you think it's weird that Windigoon believes in ghosts more than gay dudes? Hey you, do you have sweet dreams? It's your boy Keele Osle Wollums, aka K Wollums, and I welcome you to a sea of emotion where what we catch is in fate's hands. To catch up the uninitiated, Wendigoon is a popular YouTuber who explains horror, religious mythology, and conspiracy theories at length. From what I understand, he likes giants and has quite the adorable beard. In 2020, he decided to explain the Black Parade, one of the greatest rock operas available now. Mm. Listen to the album. <laughs> Wendigoon's Tale rearranges the songs of the BP to tell the tale of a teenager dying of cancer and being visited by a wayward spirit acting as a psychopomp, shepherding the protagonist to the afterlife. In the process of this meeting, the protagonist, dubbed The Patient, learns to accept and cherish their lot in life, and the spirit, dubbed The Parader, learns to have compassion for a kid down on their luck. I think that's a fine way to interpret this piece. I cannot stress enough, my love for this album and those who create far supersedes any wish to be seen as an authority on the matter. However, by taking the album as a whole, the way Frankie, Mikey, Bobby, and Jerry released it, I think we can tell a story that is more emotionally and culturally impactful, and we might just learn a bit about ourselves along the way. Windigoon. It really means the most that you show lower level creators it is possible to achieve your dreams if you put in the work. And I hope you enjoy my take on this album. So let's journey back to 2002, the year of clock stoppers. If you weren't cool enough to be chortling to the antics of French Stewart, you might have caught a little film by the name of A Walk to Remember, in which Mandy Moore has cancer or her boyfriend does. And it's sad, but they find love, so it was worth it? If you're looking for a 2002 movie to make out to, I highly recommend a walk to remember over rules of attraction. This isn't what you think it is or wants it to be. Ugh. 2003. George Bush kicks off the Iraq war, but what to do with these gay soldiers? Luckily, the predator-in-chief before him instituted Don't Ask, Don't Tell, a policy where the military wouldn't abuse closeted gays, but would ban open LGBT members. This stayed in effect until 2011 and was in full swing during the writing and release of the Black Parade. 2004. Four? The rock opera American Idiot is released by the band Green Day, protesting the war, using imagery full of the color black, topping the charts and bringing punk rock concept albums into the mainstream. But we are not done yet, because in 2005 we get the piece de resistance, broke back mountain. That's right, the bisexual cowboy movie. And if you have not seen this film, I highly recommend it. I have no idea how two guys are supposed to take care of that many sheep. I know they have dogs, but it still seems ludicrous. There are just so many sheep in that movie. And also, two cowboys hiding a love affair in a society that doesn't accept them. Nowadays, we got polycules, but spoiler alert, and trigger warning for fictional hate crimes. One of those cowboys gets beat to death with a tire iron for going down to Mexico. It's sad. I cried. People joke about that, I wish I knew how to quit you scene, but maybe it's just how they deal with how uncomfortable that scene is and makes them feel. It's powerful stuff. Also, the scenery and people in that movie are beautiful. Which brings us to 2006. The Black Parade comes out and it is Brokeback Mountain meets a walk to remember with modified American idiot aesthetics in the setting of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It is a walk back to remember. Don't, idiot. What do people do in parades? Walk. What was ACDC back in? Black. It was staring you in the face the whole time. Gay soldiers. When asked about his inspiration for the album, Gerard Way said that he looked to Freddie Mercury, and that cannot be closer to the truth. So let's get into it. We're going to have to pay attention to a couple of themes, so I've made this handy board behind me to confuse the matter. We're going to keep track of a bunch of stuff, both musically and lyrically. 
Lyrically, we'll be paying attention to blood, love, light, black, and who's going to hell. Musically, we're going to be honing in on things like repetition, 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 and mainly the way the movements in these songs signify change and emotion. In the vast majority of these songs, where we start <laughs> is not where we end, and we start at the end. A heart monitor counts time to our side. We do not march to it, we waltz. Our narrator welcomes us and gives us a few pieces of information. One, we are here to witness tragedy. Now come on, come all to this tragic affair. Two, our host is queer coded. Wipe off that makeup, what's in his despair. Three, we will be dealing with judgment from the military and the church. We get this from the words jag and penitence, where jag is a military court drama and a penitent being someone who is asking for forgiveness for their sins. May I just say that penitence ball is a wonderful piece of contrasting imagery. Why would those asking for forgiveness throw a party? <laughs> we'll find out. There is a fourth thing we learn, but real quick I want to mention the word contusion in the jag lines means bruise. And it's our first mention of blood pooling under the surface, but we'll get back to that. The singer also mentions black when saying throw on the black dress, mix in with the lot. So that's our first mention of black. There is a lot in this first song. We can kind of assume that our host is kind of a jerk with a temper given the way he shoves in our face that he expects us to cry after calling us piggies. Wendigoon says this is where the perspective shifts from the patient to the parader, but I think our boy has a little bit of a rage issue, and our host uses that rage to tell us his wants. If you don't know why that's important, watch Sideways video on a Goofy movie. Just add it to the queue and keep watching because it's so great knowing what our host wants and it's the answer to the age-old question what do you want to be when you grow up frankly mike lee bob lee and gerard lee i think i've failed our host because when he grows up he wants to be <laughs> So I'm going to agree with Goonie that we have ourselves a three-act structure and we're going to get those acts right here at the beginning. Uh, the end of the end changes into three exclamations and they give us the structure of the acts. Act one, save me slash, get me the hell out of here. Act two, save me slash, too young to die and my dear. And act three, you cannot save me slash, if you can hear me, just walk away. More like a walk to remember away, am I right? You may have noticed our act headings have two sides to them. Hmm, it's almost as if there's another character. Well, that's nice. At least we're not alone. How's our heart doing? Oh no, it's flatlining. Are we dead? No, it's life as we know it. Welcome to the chaos of a cancer diagnosis. Hear those guitars shred away any semblance of normalcy. Yes, it is dead. The song that hooked in all the edgy teens when they brought the album but were too young to understand it. Black Parade and the Teenagers were the hits, sure. But if you were cool, and I mean really cool, you'd be bumping dead from your banana yellow Xterra. It is easy to see why. It deals with death and revels in it. So heckin' edgy. Too much edge for me. Also, this is perhaps the only song on the album that isn't mainly sung from the perspective of one of our main characters. This is an ensemble song sung by the fellow members of the barracks as they find out about their fellow grunt's cancer diagnosis. <laughs> Honestly, just imagine a bunch of trained killers prancing around singing This explains the taunting nature of the song. Something about training teenagers to kill strangers gives them the weirdest sense of humor. Personally, I'd watch a whole movie about the two people who impersonate the doctor telling our boy he has two weeks to live. Wouldn't pay for it though. The soldiers dance around and talk about how funny it is that our new friend suicidally joined a life-threatening position only to be diagnosed with a terminal illness and yeah, <laughs> hilarious. At that point, do they deserve the cancer? Do they deserve heaven? They did sign up to murder people after all. 
Amid all of this cacophony, one of the soldiers says the line, as just another insult, but I want to hone in on that. From what I understand, no matter how tired and squeamish you are in the military, your supervisors will make you do your work. But those excuses might work for staying away from the bar. The soldiers are teasing our boy for not coming out to score chicks. I'm sorry, I'm too tired. You know I can't hold my liquor. No, I can't ask her out. She's way out of my league. Uh. Just like Windigoon, the barracks buddies can't even imagine the gayness because it's not in their worldview and nobody's talking about it. They completely ignore all the signs. Freddie Mercury. You know, I can't speak for everyone, but when I got diagnosed with even a fairly treatable cancer, there was a day or two when it just seemed like everything got pushed back and had the volume turned down. It was just hard to take in new information, and that's exactly what we get from this song. A ripping chaotic guitar solo ends with a countdown to what I can only assume is bitchin' choreography as all the soldiers' words are turned into a nonsense chorus of la 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 la's. <clears throat> Life as we know it has changed. Much like how Ryan became Fire Guy in The Office, Private Ryan has become Cancer Boy and cannot be saved, nor can he fade into obscurity. If life ain't just a joke, then why are we laughing? If life ain't just a joke, then why are we laughing? Well, we won't be for long. I've personally cried to each of the following songs. We have our two characters, a rage-filled, flamboyant, misanthrope, and a shy, closeted cancer patient. For the rest of the album, these two are going to try and rip your heart out, and I'm going to help them do it. So let's talk about blood for a minute. We last left it pooling under the surface. You might be asking why the thread doesn't connect the imagery of blood to the imagery of heart and dead. I have my reasons. Blood is a force of life. It transports the oxygen that allows ourselves to burn us into motion. It protects us from hostile microorganisms. Without it, there would be no passion, no fury, and that is scary because it can be removed from us. It can turn against us. If others want to rob us of our passion in life, they can simply cause us to spill too much of it. For all that it does inside of us, we pay much more attention to blood when it comes out. Too much blood loss might make one disappear. Of course, there's many ways to disappear. Death comes to mind. What if it wasn't a body disappearing, but an identity? The way one might be told to rush into battle only to get shot, one might just as easily fall in love to find the walls closing in, the threat of losing the only one they care about most. And in that moment, holding on only to be hidden, to be cast aside, to be told. No! That's right, folks. This is how I disappear, sung from the perspective of our host. To unexplain the unforgivable, drain all the blood and give the kids a show, aka they won't accept your gayness, so drain all the passion and fall in line. Don't ask, don't tell. Now let's talk about light. It literally illuminates our world and gives us warmth. I am coming to you now on an artificial beam of it, and in a way, events and stories become lamps, illuminating other aspects of experience. Do you follow? Light directs focus, so you can imagine that a seance from down below by street light on this dark night is a hidden aspect that few know about and there's things our host has done that we should never know. So the torment felt in the lyrics of This Is How I Disappear is the feeling of having your whole identity being erased when your lover wants to remain in the closet. You don't have to be LGBT to sympathize with this. How many of us have been hidden by a lover because you didn't fit their religion, weren't good enough for their friends and family, or maybe you were just the side piece? Now imagine that person, the only person who knows that side of you, which you feel is the truest you you know, is going to die and take that secret with them. You could tell people, but who's going to believe you? That you is gone. It's over. And so, in the second verse, our host calls out to God, asking why it would be fine for Cancer Boy to love women. Is it true that all the good girls go to heaven? In the third verse, the anger abates for a moment as our host grapples with the loss and makes the bold statement that he, in fact, is the ghost. Odd and hurtful thing to say to a dying person, yes, 
but a relatable feeling nonetheless. Cancer Boy will die and leave nothing but our host must live as an echo of the former self, a remnant of what most never knew existed, unable to cause any more hurt. Or maybe they can cause untold pain, tell everyone, make a scene, let the rage out in one of the most heartfelt moments in music. You Words do not describe how cathartic that fuck is, and here's where the music has changed. Our chorus is no longer a grand resound, but a broken fragment being wailed out to a living corpse who can't even hear it. Let's talk about CDs. The compact disc was once the height of sound reproduction. They're cheap, mass-producible, and had the odd defect of repeating certain sections if the disc had been scratched. The Sharpest Lives starts with a replication of this phenomenon. What does this tell us about the story? We are witnessing a cycle. The bush and pole of a strained but loving relationship. On, off again, long distance, hidden relationships all have this in common at some point. Wishing for more and being brought back to reality. Allow yourself to be whisked away to a bar. Our host enters to find Cancer Boy sitting drunk at the counter. Cancer Boy looks to his lover to say, Well, it rains and it pours when you're out on your own. If I crash on the couch, can I sleep in my clothes? I spent the night dancing, I'm drunk, I suppose. If it looks like I'm laughing, I'm really just asking to leave. And whatever your thoughts are on the LGBT experience, know that it is more than sex. Cancer Boy wants to crash in his clothes because it's the comfort he craves more than anything at this point. He knows he messed up and our host is angry at him, but damn it, this is who he is. Cancer Boy loves all the poison away with the boys in the band. Now imagine coming to your scorned lover in your darkest moment, rain pounding at the shutters of a divey booze up, and looking up and saying, So let's talk shots. What is a shot? Could be alcohol, could be a punch, could be the delivery method of both chemo and heroin, could be a chance. More importantly, it could be a hot meat injection. What would be the implications of that? Well, let's look at the rest of the chorus. Give me a shot to remember and you can take all the pain away from me. Your kiss and I will surrender. The sharpest lives are the deadliest to lead. A light to burn all the empires. So bright the sun is ashamed to rise and be in love with all of these vampires. So you can leave like the saint abandoned me. I mean, sheesh. I'm sorry if you're lonely, but I gotta admit, having someone tender by your side definitely takes away a lot of the pain. Snuggles have been a huge help in all these surgeries I've been going through. What about that sharpest lives line? Sharp can be for a knife, but it can also be good style or smarts. Could we surmise that a life based on logic will fall swiftly to emotion and passion? How many of you did something wrong because it felt so right? How many of you found right because your brain and your body could no longer hold the scaffolding of your preconceived notions and prejudices? A light to burn all the empires. Remember what I said about light? We've gone from something hidden in low light to a light so bright it scorches the homophobes and military oppressors and makes one of the highest powers we know, the sun, ashamed to have given them light in the first place. You get them, boys. But then, so you can leave like the saint abandoned me. Cancer Boy is once again pushing our host away, saying anyone who's sane leaves. But Cancer Boy needs that love one more time. And then this... <laughs> Verse 2 describes unmasking and letting your true self unfurl in a private moment with some top-notch imagery involving animals and cannibals because you gotta shout out to Kesha and then the verse ends with saying Juliet loves the beat and the lust it commands drop the dagger and lather the blood on your hands Romeo we're back to blood and two Shakespeare plays where's the blood on our host hands, like Lady McScottish play, while evoking the name of Romeo. 
a lover who killed himself when he couldn't be with Juliet. We're back to that scene in Brokeback Mountain. Why don't you just let me be, huh? Because of you, Jack, that I'm like this. And the last thing I want to stress about this song is it is one of the few, if not the only song on the album that doesn't change in the end. We're met with a guitar solo that seems to indicate we're moving forward, only to fall back into the same chorus. The cycle repeats. Here is where we are stuck. Sex in secret. Why? Obviously, don't ask, don't tell, but there's more to it than that. We've got one last song in the first act, and although Gerard Way is the only singer for my camera, it's a duet. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see the Rose Parade. We were in LA because his dad was dying and it was the first time I remember seeing him cry. His dad kind of abandoned him to start a new family and I remember thinking, geez, if he's that upset about a deadbeat, I'm really going to be a wreck when he dies. Luckily, I haven't had to cross that bridge, but that is the Black Parade, is it not? A funeral possession. <laughs> I'll say it again, a funeral procession. Someone once said you spend your whole life gathering guests for your funeral. But in the meantime, would you be the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned? And this is the central conflict of the album. Both our characters repeat the same story. In Cancer Boy's telling, being the savior involves defeating demons and non-believers. In our hosts, no defeat is required. There is no conquest, only redemption. And then we fucking rock out. Okay, verse one is Cancer Boy. Sometimes I get the feeling she's watching over me, and other times I feel like I should go. Well, through it all, the rise and fall, the bodies in the streets, and when you're gone, we want you all to know we'll carry on. It is a message of the strength of institutions such as the church and the military. Gay people rise up, but they get AIDS. You know who keeps going? The church and the military. Honestly, he's got a point. Think about how tight money is these days, but the church and military got money coming out the wazoo. They will be here no matter your love preferences, so best to step in line because they will carry on and you will be remembered as a degenerate. Verse 2. Our host retorts with, A world that sends you reeling from decimated dreams, your misery and hate will kill us all. So paint it black and take it back and let's shout it loud and clear, defiant till the end we hear the call to carry on. Do you see? That kowtowing to authority is the reason there are bodies in the streets. Those institutions are the one persecuting the oppressed. They're the ones dropping the bombs. They're the ones denying AIDS. The only hope of the outcast is to overcome and to take power themselves. To create a space that's safe to be who you are and unashamed of it. That's the only way they've carried on thus far. I mean, are you still with me, folks? No wonder this song gets people so riled up. This is the conflict so many of us wrestle with every damn day. Is it worth it to hold up an institution that causes so much grief because it seems integral to our life, or do we defy it to save those who it would harm, knowing that our lives would have to radically change? Why do we still have billionaires? Why do we have nine people in pajamas that can suddenly threaten access to abortion for millions? Because this is how we've survived this far? What if it's killing us? It is killing us. That's why those riots were happening in 2020 and 1994 and before that and before that and before that. So maybe that defeatism is what Cancer Boy is talking about when he says, on and on we carry through the fears, disappointed faces of your peers. Take a look at me because I could not care at all. But maybe you can't accept that and you stand with our host when he says, do or die, you'll never make me because the world will never take my heart go and try you'll never break me we want it all we want to play this part i won't explain or say i'm sorry i'm unashamed i'm gonna show my scars give a cheer for all the broken listen here because it's who we are and as he says this the music is swelling and it's so 
freaking triumphant you can almost imagine rays of light emanating from our host as he continues to say just a man i'm not a hero just a boy who had to sing this song just a man i'm not a hero only to be cut off by cancer boy saying i don't care and thrusting us back into the conflict that is both of these men saying the same thing with wildly different meanings it is awesome and the cherry on top is our host saying your weary widow marches oh it is brilliant and heartfelt and it tears me apart every time end act one and then you remember umbrella academy and it's all starting to come together So Wendy describes 3x structure as setup, conflict, and resolution. Welcome to the conflict section of this. Our two protagonists could not be further apart, and it shows musically because they no longer trade off songs, but have two each. Our host leads off with the absolute gut punch that is, I don't love you. Pay attention to this intro because it comes up again. This is one of the songs that I think most exemplifies why this reading of the Black Parade is more emotionally impactful. This is how Windagoon describes this song. What happened here is the patient's lover left him because he was dying of cancer. But as we've seen, our host wants nothing more than to proudly be with Cancer Boy. I submit that this is our host calling out Cancer Boy for being weak and nevertheless conceding to stay in the closet. Our host's love for Cancer Boy is so great, they'd be willing to hide it and only ask that Cancer Boy turn and say, I don't love you like I did yesterday. An act that would both redeem our host by confirming the love they had and set our host free by taking away what he was fighting for. There's so much lyrically to analyze here. The notion that time and blood are owed, the cheapening of the sharpest lives with the line, another dime is just another blow, and most importantly, the duality of Cancer Boy being shown in the contrast of the lines before each chorus. Take your gloves and get out in one instance, versus fix your eyes and get out in the other. Both these characters are both masculine and feminine because gender is a made-up construct and people contain multitudes gay soldiers. But all of that pales in the light of the emotional impact of someone completely relenting, agreeing to be hidden, and only asking in return to be lied to. To be told that they aren't loved because it makes it easier to lose the person they care about most. But of course Cancer Boy can't do that. God wouldn't approve. This brings us to House of Wolves. A bit of trivia I failed to mention is that Windagoon teaches Sunday school. I don't know what denomination he's in, but I'd like to apologize. Windagoon, I know your faith means a lot to you. House of Wolves is shitting all over the Catholic Church, so bear with me for a minute. Sorry about this. Oxford Dictionary defines contrition as the state of feeling remorseful or penitent. Hey, where have we heard that word before? Our host knows a thing about contrition, and he's got enough to spare. Verse 1 welcomes you to the church. The bridge gives us new insight into hell. Before we were asking if the good girls go to heaven, will Cancer Boy go to heaven? Now our host says plainly, well, I think I'm going to burn in hell and calls for us to burn the house down. That's right, people. House of Wolves is asking how can the church remain so self-righteous while being so cruel? If our host plays along, he's an angel, especially because he's defending the country. But as a gay man, he's a bad man deserving of punishment. So which is it, huh? You're so supportive of the dying troop, but not if he's gay. But get the choir boys around you because we all know the church is harboring sexual predators. They did a whole South Park about it. You're telling me Cancer Boy is going to hide his homosexuality because the kid fuckers tell him to? Are you freaking kidding me? Even the name House of Wolves is a play on how the Catholic believes they're the sheep when in fact they are the wolves. You still see this in how certain sections of Christian Dominionists claim America for their own and act like they're the ones getting persecuted. Mother how do you worship a guy who is all about love and helping the poor yet you turn the back on the very people he sought to protect? If you love God so much, why don't you talk to them every once in a while? For the record, I don't 
I don't think that applies to Wendigo, and he seems cool. This stuff just kind of gets me steamed. Uh, obviously, it gets our host steamed, too. There's a point where the music pauses as if for a moment of reflection, only to slam back, proudly saying, S-I-N-I-S-I-N. We also get another reference to blood. This time, that passion in life is running down the walls. A reference to the way all the bigotry and subjugation is just used to prop up monuments instead of actually helping people. S-I-N-I-S-I-N. So, what's Cancer Boy's response to all this? The words, turn away. If you could get me a drink of water... Because my lips are chapped and faded. He's gone from being on a bender to only being able to keep down water. He asks us to call his Aunt Marie. Marie? Mary? Hmm? To gather all his things and bury him in all his favorite colors. Until now, I've pointed out references to black, but not what it means. Nearest I can tell it harkens to self-righteous nihilism, a worldview that characterizes itself as being rational and realistic, and in some senses, hateful. Throughout this album, we've been encouraged to give in to that mindset by our host. He tells us to put on the black dress and paint it black, but Cancer Boy goes the opposite. He wants to show his colors, to be idealistic, to believe in a higher power that loves him, to be accepted for who he is. And why? Because that's the hardest part of this. It's leaving our host. There's a line that says, know that I will never marry. This is another one of those layered lyrics. Marry? Marry? Hmm? He won't marry because he's dying, but also because it's illegal. But also the word no. He wants that fact to be known. Counting down the days to go just ain't living. And here's where we get the switch. If you say goodbye today, I'd ask you to be true. Cancer Boy is going to come out. He's going to tell. Maybe not the military, but at least his family. At the very least, his mom. In Windigoon's telling of the Black Parade, the bombs falling at the beginning of Mama are supposedly transporting us back to World War I to get a look at the origins of the Parader. However, bombs dropping is also a term to use for important information being revealed. Important information such as coming out. Mama is Cancer Boy dropping the bomb on his Catholic mom. The song works and escalating appeals from Cancer Boy ended in the last line of the chorus, which is the mother replying, And when you go, don't return to me, my love. She's told we all go to hell. We're all gonna die. We're all full of lies. We're meant for the flies. And in one instance, that she should have raised a baby girl. You know, because all the good girls go to heaven. And all the while, before the line of no return, we get, When we go, don't blame us. We let the fires just bathe us. You made us all so famous. We'll never let you go. As if to say, we had no choice in who we love, and the prejudice only makes us stronger. Furthermore, it is that prejudice that thrusts us into the limelight. That's why I'm making this video in the first place. We've got a whole album about gay erasure in the church and polite society and the military, and almost 15 years later, a Sunday school teacher is doing the same thing, going out of his way to take the gay out of the parade. Media at large tries to politicize this as woke versus traditional values, but how more traditional of a value can you get than loving your neighbor and accepting them as who they are? What really defined and solidified the emo label was the backlash against emo, the fights in Mexico, the Daily Mail freaking out about the Black Parade afterlife and so on. People close to me have spent and continue to spend their careers in the closet for fear of reprisal. In the year of our Lord, 2023, we've got states outlawing the teaching of gay people existing under the guise that it's grooming. Meanwhile, story after story comes out about religious leaders and politicians abusing minors. That's why Cancer Boy keeps saying we're all going to hell. We're in it right now. We're so fucking afraid of doing anything but what we've been doing that we can't even treat people decently anymore, if we could ever. I honestly don't know how I can make this video not seem like an attack. Because at the end of the day, it's not. Wendigoon and I think differently, and isn't it cool that the world allows for that? Isn't it cool that the cancer that might have killed me a hundred years ago just got, like, plucked off my skin? 
hell is really quite pleasant except for the smell oh god the smell um i think cancer boy is talking about hell being a hospital bed Uh, i pick up dead people for a living and uh the smell can be god awful i don't know how hospice nurses clean those people up i'm gonna pause the teleprompter right now just to like kind of break the fourth wall and everything uh here's the deal you can get this uh bacteria called c diff that makes like old people's uh you know poops smell and farts smell the way they do and if you spend enough time around them you can catch that and uh then your poops start to smell like you're dying and that that is just one of the freakiest things uh ever Mm. Uh, I i don't recommend it um but anyway back to the script that's hell right there not even being able to wipe yourself just ticking down the days barring accident or sudden death we all make it there they've got plenty of wonderful staff and morphine but the smell is ever present and it permeates through everything there's a point in this song where the mom says you ain't no son of mine for what you've done they've got a place for you and you just mind your manners when you go i don't know if there's a reference to hell or to the military Perhaps Cancer Boy got sent in because he was fooling around with a different boy and his mom thought it would set him straight. I don't know. But uh, when she says, and if you'd call me a sweetheart, then maybe I'd sing you a song. Cancer Boy replies with the shit that I've done with this fuck of a gun. You would cry out your eyes out all night. And the triplets from the end come back around and the ensemble from dead come back and we get all carry on when our brothers in arms are gone so raise your glass high for tomorrow we die and return from the ashes you call this is quite interesting because the fortune in flame would suggest that heaven and hell are malleable now no longer an internal destinations but states of being perhaps carrying on from the black parade has been reignited but now the rift is between cancer boy and his mother rather than him and his lover a drink once more has turned into a celebratory thing as a taste of what's to come and a revelry in oblivion but as some of us know all too well Oblivion can take its sweet time. Let's talk about tape recorders. Before everything was digital and stored on a hard drive, people used to have these little recorders that transferred their voice onto little tape cassettes. Um, tape cassette. Uh, when one rewound the tape, they'd hear this like scratchy, sped up reversal of the sound. And that's what you're hearing at the beginning of sleep. Another duet in the final uh, song of act two. Verse 1 is our host saying how useless their nihilism is and how Cancer Boy doesn't have to go on living on our host's account. At this point, our host has what they want. Cancer Boy has told the world about them. However, there's still the cancer to deal with. One of the hardest parts about my Grammy having cancer was starting to hope it would all be over soon. Obviously, I didn't want to lose her, but I was. Piece by piece, she was falling apart, sometimes springing back to life only to become weaker and weaker. I think Sleep is the only song I know that deals with this head on. Cancer is a weird thing. You tell some people about it and they look at you like you're dying. Friends and family help you out and you don't want to be a burden, but at the same time, you do need the help. And sometimes seeing that fear in people's eyes brings you to tears. They've got so much going on in their lives, and you don't want to miss it. So our host sees Cancer Boy crying and says, How could you do that? Because I don't feel bad about it. So shut your eyes. Kiss me goodbye and sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. I there's the rub, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come must give us pause. Our host is giving Cancer Boy permission to shuffle off this mortal coil. At the end of our host's rendition of the chorus, we hear that the hardest part is letting go of your dreams. And that's just so sweet. Because Cancer Boy was the idealistic one, and now the life they played together isn't going to happen. 
And Cancer Boy replies with a celebratory toast to the good guys and the bad guys, to the monsters that he's been. He's accepted fate and now is celebrating his life with his love, regardless of what lies ahead in the afterlife. Drinking has gone from a vice to near impossible to a celebration. He repeats the lines, how could you cry for me because I don't feel bad about it and pleads for a host to sleep. In this instance, sleep is just sleep. This is Cancer Boy saying, hey, take care of yourself, dog. There's some parts of this I gotta go through alone. At the end of this chorus, we hear the hardest part, the awful things that I've seen. The hardest part is no longer letting go of our host because he doesn't have to. If that doesn't melt your heart, I don't know what will. We get the tape recorder again, talking about nightmares followed by pleas for sleep, but why would you send someone into the nightmare? The screams turn into, wake up! And I swear, if you get high enough, it sounds like someone's slamming on the rewind button on a tape recorder, a symbol of our heroes trying to claw back the time they simply don't have. Of course, now the secret's out. End act two. Teenagers is House of Wolves, but for the military. Yeah, I said it. Come on, they're gonna rip up your heads, your aspirations to shreds, another cog in the murder machine? This was a really popular song, getting at some troubling topics, and we celebrated it. The chorus is basically, politicians are scared of the rebellious youth, so they send them overseas to break themselves in needless wars. What's the answer then, according to our host? Give into nihilism and prove them right. Darken your clothes and strike a violent pose. Also note that you're never gonna fit in much, kid, but if you're troubled and hurt, what you got under your shirt will make them pay for the things that they did applies to both running doom on a high school and how the insurgents back then were wearing dynamite vests. This is our host railing against the military, possibly because they got kicked out after their secret was divulged, leaving them with no benefits for Cancer Boy. Fun fact, as of 2021, members who got discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell got eligible for benefits. So if you don't know, now you know. Thanks, Biden. I don't know why Obama couldn't have done it. How does Cancer Boy respond to this? What is, in my opinion, the most underrated track on the album. That song is Disenchanted. Yes, Disenchanted. We have the opening rhythm of I Don't Love You, as if in response, but this time the melody falls instead of holding. We hear... When I was there on the day They sold the cars for the queen And when the lights all went out We watched our lives on the screen I hate the ending myself But it started with an alright scene Dancer Boy sees how they've been wronged And how their torment will be remembered as some critically acclaimed movie Or video essay It also symbolizes how his life will flash before his eyes. And ending it on teenagers? Well, that's kind of lame, right? (laughs) Everything sucks. Boo-hoo. This isn't real big fish. No, it was the roar of the crowd that gave him heartache to sing. It was a lie when they smiled and said you won't feel a thing. And as they ran from the cops, they laughed so hard it would sting. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty basic, you take the good with the bad, but it's nevertheless effective at making it sound poetic. The next words we hear always stick with me. If I'm so wrong, how can you listen all night long? How beautiful is that? Contrasted with what comes next, which is, and it won't matter long after I'm gone because you never learned a goddamn thing. This is Cancer Boy lashing back at our host saying, how dare you? After all of that, you have nothing to say but, ugh, the military totally blows. Why not sing a song about how we're still supporting each other? Why not sing a song about me abandoning my family, work, and religion for you? The chorus, ending with the line, and if you think that I'm wrong, this never meant nothing to you. You might sweat the double negative, but remember way back at the beginning, which was the end, our host wants to be nothing at all. Cancer Boy calls his bluff and says, you don't want to be nothing. You want to be my love. If you didn't, you wouldn't have asked me to do all this shit. Now, are you going to smile about it or what? Verse two is showing solidarity. Cancer Boy saying they spent high school getting bullied into complying with fake dreams. So revolution is 
probably justified, but come on, it can't just be angry and sad all the time. If you're trying to build utopia, you got to emphasize the good sometimes. Finally, Cancer Boy says, go away. Just go. Run away. But where did you run to? And where did you hide? Go find another way. Price you pay. Basically saying, find someone else. Get your heart broken again. You're never going to get out of the cycle if you don't break the cycle. But the cycle continues as the chorus is repeated two more times and ends in the words, at all, repeating until they slow to a stop. And now, since you've all been so wonderful, another duet for you. Famous last words starts out with our hosts asking where Cancer Boy's heart is, stating that they know there's nothing they can do to change that part of the story. The music swells under a guitar riff. Time for another temper tantrum from our host, only this time the temper is tempered and our dude is freaking majestic. He's like, I know. There's so many others out there who have it worse, and you can find the strength to be chipper, but I'm not you. Let me be sad for a bit. I'm losing you. Is it hard understanding? He's incomplete. A life that's so demanding, he gets so weak. A love that's so demanding, he can't speak. So Cancer Boy steps up and says he's not afraid to keep on living. Our host is not afraid to walk this world alone. As long as there's love in our host's heart, Cancer Boy is forgiven. Nothing he could say would stop our host from running back into his arms because home is where the heart is, y'all. <laughs> it's around the people you love. It can also refer to the afterlife. Now, there is no heaven or hell. Simply home. <laughs> This next verse might be my favorite on the album. Cancer Boy just belting. Can you see my eyes are shining Cause I'm out here on the other side of a jet black hotel mirror? Like pupils. Like the rage-filled nihilism that infects our host is also in Cancer Boy's brain, but he chooses to shine bright in spite of it, reaching out through the darkness just to connect. Talk about a lot with a little. Huh. He's incomplete and weak too. Maybe these two have a lot in common after all. But our host can't take it. These bright lights have always blinded him. He may not be able to do his lover justice after his love departs this mortal coil. The music stops almost as if a finger is being put to lips. And what follows are the words. I see you lying next to me With words I thought I'd never speak Awake and unafraid Asleep or dead the drums swell we now have the companion to the black parade our host now sees triumph behind his dude they both belt out songs of devotion and love we never found out if the cancer is terminal i guess that's for you to decide and all that's left to do is to wrap up the show blood is the author of the story not necessarily gerard way or the character singing the end it's akin to puck's breaking of the fourth wall at the end of a midsummer's night's dream give me your hands if we be friends and robin shall restore a man so why blood we've seen blood all throughout this album well at least the first half We've heard about it collecting under the surface, being drained, lathered on hands, and dripping down walls. It's been absent for so long one could forgive you for forgetting. And now here is gallons of the stuff. More than you can drink and it'll never be enough. Oh right, we're drinking it. We are vampires. The album has given us life, or a slice of it. We gobbled it right up and begged for more. Luckily, we got more in Danger Days, but that, that that's another video. The song opens with, They encourage your complete cooperation. Send your roses when they think you need a smile. And that's hard to pin down, because that applies to so many ever-present themes. The military, churches, doctors, artistic managers, fans, certain types of lovers, uh, depending on your headspace. Uh, this could apply to gods, spirit guides, voices in your head, or creative impulses. This is followed up with, I can't control myself because I don't know how, and they love me for it. Honestly, I'll be here for a while, and we do love them for it. 
It's 17 years after the fact, and I'm still talking about this album. You could break down the whole process of how the Black Parade came together, but I don't know that anyone truly understands it. It's a thing that happened and got recorded and mass-produced. You can listen to it. Listen to the album. So what do you do with that kind of an understanding? Whoever they are, they seem to love you, and there may be no end in sight. So what do you do? You give them blood. Give them your passion and your life, knowing it will never be enough, and raise your glass. Because you're a vampire too, and there's going to be a flood. Content creation is proof of that. Sit back and enjoy the show or be part of it when the moment strikes. As of the filming of this, I've had five holes carved out of me in the last two months, and honestly, if I could stop without the fear of the cancer, I would. But that's not the world we live in. Uncontrolled growth wants its pound of flesh, and I'm here to give it the way you are to your work or some other thing you're going through. Give them blood. Or drain all the blood. Or lather on your hands, throw it up on the walls of the churches, more realistically donate it if you can. Uh, blood is a wicked weird business, but you could be the blood that saves someone's life and that's pretty awesome. During my Grammy's last year, she got a transfusion almost every week and um, I really appreciate the extra time um, I got with her, <laughs> thanks to blood donations. You can also sell your plasma. Funny story about that. In 2017, I got denied the ability to sell plasma because I answered yes to a question uh, asking if I had anal sex with another man. Uh, it had been almost a year since that event, and I had just got negative results on an AIDS test. But, hey, I guess you can't be too careful when it comes to morality punishments. Is it true that all the good girls can still get grocery money for their blood? Sorry to, sorry to get sidetracked, but that's basically the Black Parade as I see it. A demand for acceptance from two heroes in hiding. An anthem from a generation that was promised the world and then watched as it went up in flames. A rallying cry for those at odds with every institution. Learning to revel in the shared chaos. A love story. So, so what does it say that Windigoon missed, like, all of that? It's not just him. I watched at least two other videos that went with similar interpretations. Uh, Windigoon said the more he listened to the album, the more obvious the story he told became. The same happened to me. Uh, are we having a conversation about this? Is, is this a conversation right now? Am I just a reply guy going, um, actually, three years too late? Do I have the right to make claims about a person I've never met? Answer in the comments. I need engagement. Each interpretation of this album will probably say more about the person describing it than the experience you personally get listening to it. From what I gather, Windigoon thinks it'd be pretty neat to be able to get some help with death and have a happy afterlife. You can form your own conclusions about me. And leave them in the comments, I really need that engagement. But what punches through in both is the triumph over tragedy. And I think that's what's really important. That and ending the bigotry. I think it's just so special that even with all the context and proper ordering removed, the message of finding redemption by creating bridges of understanding shines through. It is the light that burns all the empires. I'd like to this to be some form of light that shines through as well. This is a contribution, not a condemnation. What I am contributing is hopefully a decent story, a story about two YouTubers talking about an album. One tells the story of a boy that is thrust into the afterlife only to have the other lost souls join in behind him. The other tells a tale of inner struggle between what has come before and what could be, all the while knowing that time is running out. The first YouTuber left their time in the cemetery of our creative output that is YouTube, only to have others like me follow in his footsteps, marching in his parade. The second channels his rage and nihilism into screaming into the void, reveling in the connections he's made, getting cancer and all that. Sometimes life imitates art in ways that you don't anticipate. I wrote a song in 2017 where I said, Seeing red skin, I'm seeing that cancer. And six years later, I'm having it taken out of me left and right. It seems like a well, like a woo-woo concept to say that it's important to be mindful of what you put your energy towards. But truly and physically, 
anytime something succeeds, it expands what is possible. This video wouldn't be so nice if Windagoon didn't seem super friendly. There's no reason for me to be mad at a guy like that. There's a whole lot of hate and fear out there. If you hop into certain sections of social media is full of people that are afraid they're next on the chopping block. People under every flag claiming to be under threat with no easy solution in sight. To saving ourselves mean defeating those who would seek to oppose us? Can we simply redeem others by understanding and sharing and caring? Is this who we truly want to be? Either way, we will carry on. If we uphold institutions that rob us of community and dignity, they will carry on. If we undo bonds of servitude and create global networks of collaboration, we will carry on. This is life, people. Afterwards, the parade may sing your song, but for now, all we have is each other. Maybe it's time for the dissonance to channel their rage into solutions instead of misanthropy. I recommend hacking. Together a wooden birdhouse. <laughs> Maybe it's time the military and church got stopped being such jerks and gave back to the needy. Maybe it's time to love our neighbors and family and pay a little less attention to the voices telling you to hate and fear because we're all on the other side of a jet black hotel mirror and incomplete. Hopefully you aren't disenchanted with this crazy little thing we call life. As for the teenagers out there, Keep scaring the hell out of those in power. They were young like you once and they need the reminder. Remember to get some sleep. If you're on good terms with her, call your mom. Drink water. Stand up for what you believe in. Learn to let go. Carry on. Shine bright. Be yourself. Live. Encourage a smile. Most importantly, give them blood. Blood. Blood! I'm the kind of human wreckage that you love. Dun, dun. If you like what you saw, go to Wolms.com. There's plenty more Kiele to go around. Writing, artwork, music, it's all there. If you think I should be financially supported, find the richest person you know. To find the richest person they know, to find the richest person they know, to find the richest person they know, and then maybe one day a billionaire will give me just a lump sum of about $50 million or so. I think that'd be pretty great. It certainly is better than us just shuffling money around Patreon as the rich suck it up from the platform and leave us with, uh, you know, just a couple of bucks slowly, slowly whittling themselves down. I know it's the best we have right now, but I think we can do better. And I want to support that. So, you know, the thing with the rich people. Keep sending it up the line. Send it up the line. Send send me up the line. Send me up the line. Send me up, up the line. Send me up the line. I might not ever make a video again. Send me up the line. Send it up the line. Just send it up the line. Send it up. Piece of pizza, a deuces deuce. I love you and Windigoon. All right.